If South Africa can present that in such a clear and direct and harrowing and horrifying way, then one thing we must remember is that our government knows. Our government knows. They know that of all the people right now across the world, over 7 billion people currently in famine, 80% are in Gaza. 80%. Our government knows that's because the Israelis have bombed bakeries, destroyed agricultural land, been explicit and made clear that they would lock off food, water, medical supplies and fuel to a population cage of 2.1 million people, half of whom have kids. Labor knows. Our government knows. They know that the daily death rate in Gaza is higher than any conflict in the 21st century. They know more kids have been killed than any conflict in the 21st century. They know that every day, every day, hundreds of Palestinian women give birth without any access to even the most basic medical supplies. The most basic medical supplies, and they know it's because Israel is embargoing and stopping anything, even the most basic anesthesia, antibiotics from getting into that tin to the Gaza Strip. They know that Israel is doing that. They know that 23,000 people now have been murdered, murdered by the Israeli military. We hear kill and die as if it's some neutral uh, force of nature, uncontrollable by governments of the world by Israel, but they have been murdered by the IDF with the express support of our government and the Australian government. They know. And what they also know, and what South Africa made clear at the ICJ, if you sat through that hearing, is that experts now predict that more people will die of hunger and starvation and disease than have been murdered by Israeli bombs. And make no mistake, when the ABC reports it and when the other media outlets report it, they say, oh, isn't this a tragedy? Some people are dying of disease and malnutrition and, oh, we need to get humanitarian aid. They won't mention that that is the express and desired outcome of the Israeli military. Now, what has become clear now, despite them knowing all of this, they now are going to attempt to obfuscate and obscure their position and pretend that actually, as Penny Wong said when she toured the Middle East, oh, we're concerned. We're concerned about the death toll, the civilian death toll in Gaza. Well, they're concerned, but they can't even call for a permanent ceasefire. They're concerned that they're going to keep selling weapons to the Israeli military. They're concerned, but they can't even support the South African case of, of genocide in the ICJ. No, oh, they're apparently concerned, despite the fact that they supported the case in Ukraine against Russia. Because really what's clear, really what's clear is they have chosen to be lackeys in the US Empire over peace and dignity and human life. They have made that choice. And now it's up to us to make a choice. Now it's up to us to make a choice, because we know as well, don't we? We know. We know, and we are part, let's be clear, of the global peace movement, fighting with and on behalf of Palestinians, fighting for peace, going to rallies, boycotting and divesting and pushing our politicians to do more. It's our job to stand up and fight for a free Palestine and fight for peace. <laughs> Let me finish with this. Uh, this is Jeremy Corbyn, a great fighter for Palestine, the former UK Labour leader. Um, someone who was destroyed by the like, UK Labour Party for partially standing up for Palestine. He said he remembered the first marches and rallies against apartheid in South Africa. He remembered how few people turned up. He remembered how he was scorned and attacked by the police and the political and media establishment. And guess what they want? And we can win too. And they rely on crushing our hope, but we have hope because we have a responsibility to every Palestinian in Gaza and the West Bank to fight for them. That's why we're here today. That's why we're fighting for a free Palestine. Thank you.